All right, we're going to start with the first of these three that I've labeled, one, two, and three. But in order to get started, I really need some more room. So I'm going to erase this definition of TC of n, although it's very, very useful, uh, just to get myself some room off to the side here in order to do my analysis. Now, if I'm not sure how this loop works, a really great thing is just to make myself a table that shows how the loop works for different values of the bound on the loop. In this case, n is the relevant thing to play around with, right? i is a kind of the independent variable, well, i is the loop variable, and n is the independent variable that tells us how long is that loop going to run. i will run to a certain length, depending on n. So let's make a table. And we'll start with n in our table. And we know n is greater than 0, so let's start with n equal to 1. And let's just see what the values of i are over here. So those, these are our i's. Uh, i clearly starts at 1. i always starts at 1. It says so right here. And then while i is less than n, well, is 1 less than n? 1 is not less than n. And so that's it. That's the end of our loop the first time. Let's actually write down the number of iterations. That might be a nice thing to have, too. Number of iters. Uh, in this case is zero, right? We did zero iterations of the loop. Okay, uh, that wasn't very interesting. Let's try n equal to two. Uh, one is less than two, so we will go into the body of the loop here and double i, so i goes from one to two. And now, is two less than two? No, two is not less than two, and so we drop out of the loop. So we just had one iteration there. When n is equal to three, we're going to start with 1, as always. Uh, 1 is less than 3, so we'll double i. 2 is less than 3, so we'll actually go into the loop and double i again. 4 is not less than 3, and so we'll be done. And we had two iterations of the loop. I think I need some more space here. OK, uh, let's try i equal to 4. And actually, I can kind of see what's going to happen right away. We're going to get up to this 4 value. 4 is not less than 4, and so we'll terminate the loop. Two iterations. Let's try 5. 5, i is 1 to start with. That's too small, so we'll get to 2. That's too small, so we'll get to 4, just like on the previous iterations. So we get up to 4. Come up here, 4 is less than 5, so we'll double i again and get to 8. And then 8 is not less than 5, and so we'll drop out, and that's three iterations. And actually, right here, I notice we get up to 8. What mattered up here was that we got to 4, and so when, when we had 4 over here, we were still going to have the same number of iterations. Here, even when we get all the way up to 8, we're going to see the same thing here. 1, 2, 4, 8. We'll go up here and we'll say, is 8 less than 8? The answer is no, and so it'll still be three iterations. So that kind of makes sense. Uh, for, for everything above 2 up to 4, we got the same number of iterations. For everything above 4 up to 8, we got the same number of iterations. Because we're doubling i each time, we're going to expect for 9 through 16 then, we're going to see 1, 2, 4, 8, and 16, and we'll see 4 iterations. And does that make sense? Uh, let's see, when we get up to 9, 8 will be too small, so we will cross 8 off. We'll double 8, we'll get 16, and then we'll stop. So yeah, it looks like as we increase n, each time we double n effectively, we increase the number of iterations by 1. Um, so there's an exponential increase in n for the number of iterations. So the inverse of that exponential increase is a logarithmic increase in the number of iterations as we increase n. So what, what we should see is that this number of iterations, this is proportional to O of log of n. Let's try and be more precise than that. So uh, how many iterations do we go through? What does i end up actually being? Uh, let's see. Well, the log of 1 is 0. You know what would, what would be nice? I'm, I'm just going to erase what I have in here, where I said that it's O of log of n. And I'm going to add just a little bit more to my table. I'm going to say what log of n is, and we'll see if that's useful. Uh, so log of n here is 0. Uh, log of n here is 1. The log of 2 is 1. The log of 3 is greater than 1 and less than 2. 
log of four is just two. The log of five is greater, oh, sorry, <laughs> I wrote four. Log of four is just two. The log of five is greater than two and it's less than three and so on and so forth down to eight, we get to three. And then here, da 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 da, we get up to four. So it seems to matter is uh, when the log of n gets a little bit bigger. So here, when the log of n is moving towards two, but it's already bigger than one, we get the same result as we do for four. So we get two. So that sounds to me like the ceiling of the log of n. So the ceiling of the log of n here, let's see. Let's, let's change this to ceiling of log of n. Uh, that's zero, that's one. This becomes two, this becomes three, this is still three, and everything in here just becomes four, uh, which is perfect. Now it just describes the number of iterations. Fantastic, so the number of iterations is exactly the ceiling of the log of n. We don't always need that, but I was just noticing we, we really need i down here uh, after, so if you look over in our number one area here, uh, when we're done with it, we really need the value of i to lead into number two because we're gonna start from i and work our way up. Uh, so it would be really nice if we knew the exact value of i, and the number of iterations kind of, kind of gives us the exact value of i, because notice uh, the number of iterations when it's zero, i is one. When it's one, i gets up to two. When it's two, i gets up to four. When it's three, i gets up to eight. And when it's four, i gets up to 16. In other words, i is two to the number of iterations. So i finishes up as two raised to the ceiling of the log of n. Uh, that's super ugly. But how about this? It's a power of two, and it's the power of two that is at least as large as n, right? Here, when n is five through eight, i is the power of two that is at least as large as n, which is eight in every case. So we got a lot of information now. We know the number of iterations. And we do exactly ceiling of log n iterations. We know what i ends up being. It is two to the ceiling of log n, or the power of two that's at least as large as n. Um, when we divide i by two, it'll actually be, let's see, it'll be a power of two that's a little smaller than n. Yeah, yeah, it'll always be a power of two that's a little bit smaller than n. I think we're ready for part two. Uh, oh, you know, what we didn't say is how much time this takes asymptotically. Well, if it does log n iterations, and if each iteration, as we annotated way over on the left, takes constant time, then the amount of time that this whole block takes is O of log of n.